Hey guys, so I want to talk about a very serious issue that I don't think anyone else even figured out this is happening. Is with these group submitters to PSA like Gems Only, like Card Collector 2, like, you know, Mark's Cards, a middleman of a middleman. Well, in Gems Only, I would be very concerned because these people were banned. This store was banned from submitting cards because they submitted too many altered cards to PSA. So they were not allowed to submit anymore based on PSA's policies. But so what did they do? Did they tell their customers, hey guys, we're not PSA approved. We lost our PSA license. We're gonna be upfront with you and tell you that we, we just can't submit anymore. No, they still wanted to make money. And so they used Mark's cards. So this is a group that cannot tell the difference between an altered card, which sometimes the fake card, sometimes it's a pass exchange, sometimes it could be any amount, it could be trimming, but an altered card essentially is a card that PSA says, I can't, we cannot grade this card in good faith because something is wrong with it. You've done something to try to increase the value of this card to make it non-legitimate. The card honestly could be fake as well. So PSA does not grade altered cards for the simple reason that it would make them <laughs> look bad. And it would be a great scandal if even one of these altered cards, I mean, you hear about it all the time. Hey, they graded this fake card, they graded this fake card, you know, somebody trimmed this card. These are scandals. The last thing that a authenticator would want is to have more scandal in their, I mean, again, this is not something that they would want to be on the news for. So by saying, hey, we're not going to take your cards anymore, gems only, they're saying, you're trying to set us up. And in terms like that, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious you don't want to do business with someone trying to screw you. Because if one of those altered cards does get past you, well, you know, the person who bought it, the person who submitted it, I mean, there are future ramifications, even if they're not in immediate for that person and their card and whoever the card goes to and whoever trades a card and so on, and reputations. And so you're talking about a card grader and every single card grader I know always says, oh, you know, I'm really good at figuring out pre-grades. Pre-grade would be like, oh, I believe this is a PSA 10. I believe this is a PSA. Same with Mark's cards. Well, what's to stop a group submitter, especially if there are multiple group submitters, especially if they're already banned from PSA, so they don't have much to lose now, right? Especially if they're bankrupt, so they don't have anything to lose. Just like gems only, I, I don't know if that's bankrupt or their store is just closed, but Mark's cards is bankrupt. If you're going to, if your plan is to declare bankruptcy, no one can really sue you because you don't, by definition, you're saying, hey, I, I spent the money on nice restaurants and Lambos, rentals, you know, living up the life, giving free product to people on YouTube. I don't got no money left, so don't sue me. So I'm a lawyer. The first thing you learn, learn as a lawyer, never sue someone who does not have money because even if you win, collecting the money is gonna cost more money to collect it and win the money then the money is worth, unless it's like a huge sum of money, right? You can't collect from someone who's broke. It's kind of like the same thing with the homeless people. Why are the homeless on the street breaking the law where they're legally not supposed to? What, what do you do? You arrest them and you throw them in prison and you give them a meal, you give them a warm place to stay? Prison costs a lot of money, especially if it's a private prison. It costs taxpayers a shit ton of money every day to put prisoners in prison. So it's just better to leave them outside and just hope that you know they can improve their lives some miraculously somehow. So the swapping of the cards is exactly what I would do if I was one of these shady organizations. Because if I didn't have any ethics, this is what I would do. Let's say I have 10 Charizards, uh, first edition Charizards. A Charizard according, first edition Charizard PSA 10 according to Sasha T goes for half a million dollars. I'm highly motivated to collect a bunch of Charizard. So I'm a Pokemon grader over, over the pond in the UK, like that one guy. They all have the same name, Gen Mint, Gen Mint, Gen Mint. I mean, they all have basically the same name. I mean, I can't, this, these are two different companies I'm talking about, but they have like the identical name. 
the gem mints are mints only or gems only or gem, you know, they have gem and then some type of thing that indicates that they only have gems. So, well, I collected 100 people who wanted to grade their Charizard. Now, some of them I'm not going to care about because they're like PSA 4s, PSA 5s. Remember, I'm supposedly this grading expert and this is why you're giving me the cards because I can pre-grade them for you. So I'm a grading expert. I'm getting a lot of cards and if I'm really good and my eyes very clean, keen and then the center and so on, why don't I just take my 10 BGS 8s and pick the best 10 in this pile? And if one of them, even one of them hits a PSA 10, I'm a half a million dollars richer. Minus whatever a PSA 8 is. So I, I've never understood this group submitting because you're trusting your cards with a complete stranger that you don't know. And even if you give your cards to Card Collector 2 and he does a good job I and mean, he doesn't swap cards, how you know when he gives it a Mark's cards, Mark's cards isn't swapping cards, especially for these very common. In my example, I'm using first edition Charizards, which are rare, but in a typical example, it would be a Trey, it would be a Luca base, it would be a Giannis base rookie, it would be a, you know, I mean, it would be a bulk submission. So by definition, you would have a lot of these cards. And if you really were good at grading and you could tell the difference between a nine and a 10 that most people cannot tell, switch all your nines out for tens. Take your clients or your customers or your customer customer, depending on how many middlemen there are. So when I learned that, you know, somebody got banned, a group submitter got banned from submitting because they sent too many ultra cards, which indicates they A, don't know what how to identify an ultra card or B, is intentionally doing so. Either way, there's no justification. That, that's why they got banned. Trust me, they probably appealed. I mean, if this was their livelihood, this was how they made their money, they were not happy the day that they got banned, but none of their customers knew. I'll put it this way. Would you submit to someone who you knew got banned from PSA, submitting to PSA? Like if you were their customer and they were upfront with you, and they said, you know what? We cannot submit, but we'll take a fee and we'll give it to Mark's cards and Mark's cards will submit for you, but we'll still take our fee. And you know what we're going to do? Um, and then that we were banned because we submitted too many altered cards. That is a terrible sales pitch. And I don't think if they were honest, any customers would ever give them the cards to then give them Mark's cards. What their sales pitch had to be was, oh, we're going to submit it directly which was exactly Card Kingdom, a Card Collector 2 sales. I mean, no one knew, and he never told, that people, that he, because it doesn't make any sense. You know, you might think, oh, uh, there's a lower rate in marks. No, it doesn't make any sense, because if you wanted that, the reason Card Collector 2 is doing this, and the reason that Gems Only is doing this, is they're making, they're getting a bag. You have to understand, they're taking profit off the top. Okay, and then they have to ship, you ship it to them, they ship it to Marks, Marks walks it in, right? Well, I can make this a lot cheaper for everybody. You just ship, ship it to Marks, Marks walks it in, if you trust in Marks. And here's my problem is maybe you don't trust them, but you're giving him the cards anyway. Maybe you're like, hey, you know, I watched this video and Marks comes off as a scammer to me. I'm never going to send cards to Marks, but let me send to Card Collector 2 or Gems Only. So Card Collector 2, you don't even know he's sending them Marks cards who you don't like. Gems only, you don't know that they're sending Mark's cards who you don't like, plus the fact that Gems only has been banned. And this is why it's wildly inappropriate. And this is why I know the swapping cards is happening because these people have no ethics. Take backyard football, for instance, right? They probably do card grading. I would be surprised if they did not. As soon as they saw a card more than $15,000, they they did everything in their power to keep the card. I think recently they were giving away Super Bowl tickets basically to their friends. I mean, it's super obvious that none of this is actually happening because I, I can I can just tell you how it is, right? When you if you hit a a T Lawrence a fifteen thousand twenty thousand dollar card and you say that card that it's a life-changing amount of money to you 
And in that instant where you're naturally, you're, you're gonna behave like you normally behave, you st basically steal the card. There are times like with these swaps that no one would ever know. Like in this case, you're, if you're willing to, and this is what I say about cheaters and liars, if you're willing on camera to cheat, lie, or steal on camera in front of all your audience, there is no way that you don't do that in private. If you're willing to publicly defame yourself, there's no way that you're not doing shadier stuff in, public, uh, in private. So this gems only, right? They got banned. So if they're doing shady activity, now I think they might declare bankruptcy. They got the idea from Mark's cards. If you're spending money that you should not spend, you tell it and this becomes public and you know this can become public, but you do it anyway, right? And you supposedly sign an asset agreement with Card Collector 2 that you don't hold yourself to, that you don't actually make payment and this is why it became public. If you're doing all this shady activity and you sign a contract with the dude and you don't honor the contract and the dude is out $120,000 that he already paid you, if this is who you are and publicly, right? Because you know this will come out public, then who are you in private? So when I see someone beat their dog in public, I know that dog is getting beat far worse in private, right? You know, I worked in an animal shelter. I understand, and it's time to report this individual, right? When I see somebody leave their dog out in, in the freezing cold, I know that their do dog is not being well taken care of. It's this very obvious thing. If you're so bold to publicly, on the record, steal a card why would you not steal one in private when no one would know it doesn't make any sense right you know it, <laughs> bentley no bentley no i honestly can't make videos for my dogs it's so difficult to make videos hi <laughs> guys